Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, unless you are new, then hi, welcome to my channel. Today, as you can tell by the title of the video, we're going to be talking about two of my all-time favourite TV shows, and those TV shows are Skins and Euphoria. I've loved Skins for a good eight-ish years now, it's been one of my all-time favourite TV shows, so you best believe I had so many messages of people telling me to watch Euphoria when it came out. These two TV shows seem to be compared a lot, if you like Skins, people tell you to watch Euphoria, and if you like Euphoria, people tell you to watch Skins and I wanted to look into why that is. Just to let you know in this video today I will be spoiling both of these TV shows so if you haven't seen one or you haven't seen the other and you want to go do that first and then maybe come back afterwards. I also just want to pre-warn you that we will be talking about sensitive topics like drug abuse, mental health and abusive relationships. Also everything that I'll be saying in this video is my own personal opinion. Of course everyone's going to have a difference of opinion and I'll I'd love to hear what you have to say down below in the comments. So what is Euphoria and Skins? Now Skins was a UK TV show that was on E4 in 2007. It was about following a group of teenagers who were going to college, so they are around 16 to 18 years old. This show explores love, friendship, mental health, partying, drugs, etc. Just all those teenage drama type topics. And this TV show finished in 2013 with seven seasons overall. Now Euphoria is a US TV show that was first aired in 2019 on HBO, so this is very very recent, and it explores the exact same topics of partying, mental health, love, friendship, all those teenage topics. Once again we are following these teenagers in high school so they are around 17 to 18 years old but there is only one season of this so far because season two was going to happen and then the whole entire world stopped so I believe season two will be happening in 2021. At first glance it may seem a little bit weird to compare the two shows because Skins has 61 episodes overall meanwhile we have Euphoria with only eight episodes but people already compare them a lot and I really wanted to explore why that is. Firstly, I'd like to talk about how these two shows are filmed. Now, Skins, like I said, is a UK TV show. So straight away, this means that Skins is going to be filmed differently to Euphoria that was filmed in the US. Not only that, but Skins was filmed in 2007, whereas Euphoria was filmed in 2019. So there is an extra 12 years of technology on top of Euphoria than Skins. <laughs> However, Skins was way ahead of its time and I haven't seen a show quite like it since. UK TV TV shows in general are filmed in more of a real way. The colour isn't enhanced, there isn't many artsy shots, it's usually quite dull because the UK is quite dull. So Skins is filmed like this along with not many artsy cuts or shots. It's all very very simple but that is UK TV as a whole. But this creates Skins to feel a lot more realistic than Euphoria. The main reason I wanted to talk about how these shows are filmed was because of Euphoria. They play with colour constantly along with very artsy shots and artsy cuts and editing. My boyfriend said while we were watching Watching it that it was a little like scrolling through Tumblr which I think is the perfect way to explain watching Euphoria. This may be an extra reason why early 20s to late teens really really enjoy the show because it feels really familiar to them because we all love a Tumblr aesthetic. Euphoria feels, if I dare say it, euphoric and more like a fantasy more so than Skins does but that is due to the camera shots and how it's edited. Some of the standout shots to me in Euphoria were shots like Jules and Rue in Jules's room and they were high and covered in glitter. I also love the one of Rue and Jules in bed together while the camera kind of like spins around but I think my favorite is the spinning room. Now the spinning room was a set that they actually built that spun 360 degrees. They got Zendaya who plays Rue to basically walk around the whole thing whilst it span and all the other actors were strapped in. I had to search it because I was so intrigued by it that I had to know how on earth they did that shot. This show is full of iconic shots that you could just cut and paste and put on your wall due to the camera and the lighting and how it is edited, whereas with Skins I feel like it's got more iconic scenes where you could actually say them word by word like I can. I like how both ways are filmed. I like the UK way because it is more realistic. It feels more like we are following these teenagers as if it's a documentary rather than a 
TV show, but I also really, really appreciate high production TV shows like Euphoria. But with this video, I'm not saying which show is better than the other. I'm simply just comparing the two to see just how similar they both are. We can't talk about these two shows, however, without talking about the characters in them. So both of these shows have very memorable and very interesting characters. The most well-known character in Skins is Effie Stoneham. There she is. Now Effie is the foundation of Skins. If you haven't seen Skins, you know exactly who Effie Stoneham is. Now Effie is a cool girl that everyone either loves or wants to be, hence why I'm 22 years old and dressed exactly like Effie Stoneham right now. But when I was a teenager, I was desperate to be Effie along with people telling me I looked like her. So I was like, oh. I'll take it. She's actually a very toxic character, but because she's so mysterious, we all for some reason just fall in love with her. During the first two seasons, Effie is the little sister to Tony, who was the main character. So we don't actually know much about her and she doesn't really say anything at all. But we do know is that she is completely over-sexualized by older men. But when we come to the third and fourth season, she's finally her own character with her own story. Effie's actually a very complex character with a lot of layers to her. She plays with guys' feelings like Freddy and Cook. She's not a good friend to people like Pandora. She doesn't get on with her family. She struggles really badly with her mental health and she's still really over-sexualized by older men and the list goes on and on and on. Watching Euphoria, I see Effie in quite a lot of the characters and I may be wrong here, but I feel like Effie is the blueprint to a lot of them. For example, in Euphoria, we have Maddie. Now, Maddie is the cool girl with the trendiest makeup and the best of fashion but she's also got a mysterious and confident vibe to her like Effie does however Maddie is a very very complex person and we're gonna get into more of that later in the video. We also have Rue who is the main character like Effie. She's a drug addict who struggles with her mental health and has bipolar and depression. A scene where I really saw Effie in Rue is when she hits rock bottom. In Skins, the scene is Effie is curled up in a ball underneath the bed and her boyfriend Freddie is trying to get her out. When he does, he baths her and then helps her get ready for the day. Now, when I was watching Euphoria and I saw Rue curled up on the floor in the hallway because she's in so much pain, she hasn't peed for two days because she was so depressed. Her mum has to come and pick her up, bathe her and help her get ready. And for me, when I saw that, I just thought, Effie. Both of these scenes show very strong characters being very vulnerable and finally letting other people help them. The last character I really saw Effie in was Cassie, from the drunk parents that don't care about them to how men see them. Cassie is a very beautiful girl who we are told from the start is easy because the first thing we know about her is there's a sex tape circulating which we then find out later on she did not want to happen and all the guys are just watching it and talking about her disrespectfully. Like Effie, she's objectified by every man she meets. Cassie meets Chris who falls head over heels for her and they end up starting to date. Despite his love, Chris falls into the trap of thinking that what Cassie wants is what every guy is telling him that she wants. And I believe that was the start of how their relationship became very confusing. They never really got along, but at the same time, they were hopelessly in love with one another. But Rue later tells us in a voiceover that Cassie is just always in love. During this time, however, Cassie meets someone called Daniel and Daniel just likes Cassie the same reason that every other guy does for sex. Cassie constantly tells him that they can't have sex but carries on making out with him every time they see one another. She's just constantly cheating on Chris, not because she has feelings for Daniel but because she is just very insecure. Effie is also someone who really couldn't commit. Generation 2 was just full with who is Effie going to pick. We have Freddie who fell in love with her instantly and then we have Cook who liked her for the same reason, sex. However, later on in the show, Cook does end up falling completely in love with her. The whole time, Effie is just continuously playing with their emotions like Cassie does in Euphoria. I personally don't think these two characters are meant to be players as such. I think they've just been treated badly by their parents and by men that they don't think they deserve anything good. Therefore, they self-sabotage. I have no idea if this is the intent of the storylines, but that's just how I personally see it. 
both shows main storylines are to do with romantic relationships for example we have Rue and Jules in Euphoria who are a LGBTQ plus representation in the show and then in Skins we have Naomi and Emily both relationships are completely different to one another however girl on girl relationships in TV shows and films are barely ever there unless it's for the male gaze so it's nice to see something that isn't for the male gaze but both of these relationships go along the same thing of one is in bad place other tries to help them but in that they obviously get better, but then the other one gets worse. We also have relationships like Kat and Ethan in Euphoria and Minnie and Aloe in Skins. We have the same storyline of girl thinks she's too cool for boy, treats boy badly, but falls in love with boy anyway. The main relationships though are Nate and Maddie from Euphoria and Tony and Michelle from Skins. The Nate and Maddie relationship for starters is explored way more than the Tony and Michelle one in Skins. I think the writers of Euphoria wrote Nate and Maddie's relationship really well, I believed it. No matter what would happen in the relationship or who would tell them not to see one another, they would always end up back together because their love was stronger than anything and anyone else. Obviously, they're not in love. No matter the awful things Nate would do to Maddie, Maddie truly believed he would do no wrong and loved him despite his abusive actions towards her. Maddie is a very, very strong character with a lot of confidence. We can see this in the makeup she wears and the clothes she wears. As the season goes on, you start to see her break down and you can see this through her makeup and her fashion as well. Meanwhile, Nate is a very, very disturbed guy who has a lot of anger issues, especially to do with his dad but he makes a lot of the drama in Euphoria. The reason I compare this relationship to Tony and Michelle's is because on the surface it's basically the same thing. Tony treats Michelle badly, Michelle isn't great back, but they still end up back together because they believe they're in love with one another. The relationship is flawed from start to end. You can see this through them being manipulative, from cheating on each other to playing mind games, and like Nate, Tony is the main fuel of most of the drama in Skins. According to the CDC in America, one in four women and one in seven men will experience physical violence by their partner in their lifetime. Despite this, TV and film often glamorize these kind of relationships as goals. I don't think Euphoria or Skins are trying to glamorize these relationships at all. The glamorization of Nate and Maddie's relationship doesn't come from the actors or the writers themselves. It comes from how they've edited the show, the lighting, the camera angles. Like I said, it's Tumblr. <laughs> Alexa Demi, who plays Maddie in Euphoria, said in an interview about the relationship, as much as you think the person loves you and as much as you think you love them, anytime it starts to get violent, whether that's physically or mentally, you need to make that choice to leave because it can get worse. And if you have been affected by abuse in any way, I will leave some links down below for you. One thing both of these shows 100% have in common is people saying how unrealistic they are, they didn't know anyone at college like that, their high school slash college experience wasn't like that in general. Of course people's high school slash college experiences won't be exactly like these shows, however there will be elements that you can take from it, but for some people they won't relate to anything. Weirdly when I was researching for this video I came across this quote from the creator of Euphoria who said young people will be like yeah that's my life, I'm sure certain people will be freaked out by it but other people will relate to it and personally for myself I can definitely relate to different aspects obviously not everything like some of the storylines or parts of emotions or little bits of relationships also at the start of Euphoria Rue says I'm not the most reliable narrator now this already tells us that Rue is the one that's telling us these stories so of course as a teenager would they would exaggerate it ever so slightly so of course this isn't exactly exactly how the story would have gone anyway. Plus, if you are looking for 100% realism, you can watch a documentary. Euphoria and Skins both talk about hard topics that teenagers come across with, but both TV shows tell them completely differently. Like, for example, we have, like I said earlier, with the mental health with Rue and with Effie, but both were shown completely differently because mental health is completely different to each individual person. Another big topic in both shows is partying and drugs. Now you'd be lying to yourself if you didn't know at least one person at college 
who loved drugs as much as they do in Euphoria and Skins. Of course, not every single teenager at college is like this, but we are following that kind of crowd of people. Skins plays into glorifying taking drugs a lot more than Euphoria does, even though Euphoria is just more pretty to look at. Because every time a character takes drugs in Euphoria, it always ends in a bad experience or something bad happening. For example, we have Cassie at the fun fair. Now that is one of the most awkward watches I've ever had watching a TV show for that person. So it shows that drugs don't just have bad endings, but really embarrassing ones too. Skins, of course, does also do this too. They don't want a 16 year old coming away from watching one of these shows and thinking, yeah, I'll do that too. But sometimes skins can just end in, ah, that was a good time. However, when the characters do have bad experiences with taking drugs, they always have a really bad experience. For example, like Effie in the woods. I'm so sorry I mentioned Effie so much, but this is just the perfect example of this. Effie actually has a few bad experiences with drugs on the show. And one of the first times we see her, she is overdosed on drugs and her brother has to come and save her. But one of the worst experiences on the whole entire show was in the woods with Effie and Katie. So they were having a fight and because of the bad trip that Effie was having, it became a lot larger in her head and she reached over and hit Katie in the back of the head with a rock. Now that is one of the scenes that has forever made me stay away from drugs. <laughs> but teen dramas can really easily fall into glorifying these kind of hard topics. And some shows really do miss the mark, but I never come away from Euphoria or Skins thinking, I wanna take drugs, I want to have an abusive relationship, I want to have depression. But it makes me aware that these things are happening, if not to me, then to other people. When Skins was first released, an article came out called the most dangerous television show for children that we have ever seen. <laughs> Which the creator of Skins responded with, in the UK, Skins is part of drug training programs. It's used in films about gay teenagers coming out and it's used in public health context. It might be worthwhile reminding people that the first episode of Skins is about a boy who sets out to lose his virginity and realizes later in the episode that he's not ready. With Euphoria, the creator himself is a recovering drug addict of 15 years now, so the show is based off of his real life experiences. Despite going through all the similarities between these two shows, there are obviously so many differences between them. In Skins, you'll have characters that you will never see in Euphoria and so many stories such as Chris dating a teacher, Sid having to buy drugs off a pathetic gangster, Michelle and her mum's relationship, Pandora dating a guy who actually lives in the Congo, Karen who is auditioning to be part of the sex bombs. We have Matty, one of the most confusing and dis likeable characters I've ever watched in my life. And then we've also got Frankie who does like the biggest 180 turn on her character. <laughs> However, one of my favorite characters in Skins that I have not seen anywhere in Euphoria is Rich. Rich is a character that I genuinely really, really liked and he honestly carried generation three all by himself. So Rich was a guy that was too cool for everyone else. He was very punk rock. He dressed like a punk rocker and he thought he was just way too cool way too mature for everyone around him until he meets Grace. This romance was never toxic or felt wrong. It was pure, it was sweet. It was just a nice teen romance. However, very sadly with the story, Grace does actually die and it was one of the most heartbroken I have ever been watching Skins. But Rich's character development is one of the greatest in Skins, if not the greatest in Skins that I saw. But the same goes for Euphoria. There are loads and loads of stories that don't match up with Skins. The biggest one is Nate and his dad. I can't even go into this, otherwise this video will be like an hour long as much as I wish I could go into depth about this one is so different and interesting. Fez and his role in Rue's life. We've got Lexi as a whole. I would love to know so much more about Lexi in the next season. Jules and how she doesn't get into relationships, but she has her interesting relationships with Rue, Nate, 
and Nate's dad. Once again, really, really interesting, but I'd be here forever if I actually spoke in depth about all of these. The story I enjoyed the most though was Cats. I thought it was so different and so interesting. Now, of course, Skins is in 2007, so this storyline just couldn't really happen in the same way with their flip phones uh, <laughs> because Cat becomes an online sex worker. Cat starts out as a beautiful, smart girl who is a One Direction fanfic writer. I really liked that in there, thought it was very, very clever. But she wants to become more confident in herself. So she goes to a party and speaks to a few guys and pretends that she knows all things about sex. And she ends up losing her virginity to a guy who ends up recording her. And of course, she is upset when she finds out because the video ends up on a porn website. Like I said, Kat is a very smart girl. So she's reading the comments of this video and she's seeing that people are wanting more more from her, they're asking where they can find her, etc, etc. So she decides to just make an account herself. And soon enough, people are messaging her asking for private Zoom calls, or Skype calls, whatever it is. She does so anonymously by wearing a mask and she ends up making a huge amount of money. She then buys a whole new wardrobe with that money to go along with her newfound confidence. I personally really love Kat's character. I think how they changed her from episode episode one to episode eight was done so well. You can tell it's the same girl, but with just a lot more confidence. And I absolutely love that. Speaking about Kat's transformation has swiftly moved me on to talking about the makeup and the fashion in these two TV shows. Now Euphoria, clearly does this a lot better, but that is one of the main parts of Euphoria, whereas Skins is just an added part. However, both are just super iconic. Skins, of course, is in 2007, so don't expect the fashion and makeup to be the most amazing thing you've ever seen. But makeup and fashion isn't just there for you to look at, it's also there for you to know a little bit more about each character. From Skins, we have Cassie, yes, a different Cassie, who wears little bits of glitter, flowy dresses because she's a little bit away with the fairies. She's very sweet and very ditzy. Naomi and her heavy eyeliner and bold lips with layered clothing because she is bold and strong yet underneath all the layers she is very vulnerable. Pandora and her crazy colored eyeshadows and her wacky clothing because she is just that. She's crazy. No one completely understands her but she's really fun. Minnie with her soft and smoky makeup with mainstream clothing because she just wants to be loved by everyone. She doesn't want to be judged. So she just wants to be accepted by people like her mum and also boys. Of course, the most iconic of them all is Effie Stoneham with her dark eyes, dark black clothing because she is a very mysterious character, but she's also really cool and just not like other girls. She was also the face and still is the face of Tumblr grunge. There's even videos on my own channel from like five, six years ago of me recreating Effie's style and her makeup looks. So I think that says a lot. <laughs> Euphoria is a whole nother ball game. I just absolutely love the makeup and fashion, but it is very 2020. We have Jules with her vibrant, bright and creative makeup looks and her pastel colored clothing, which just shows us that she is so confident in herself. She knows what she wants, but she doesn't mind experimenting with different things. Rue mainly has a bare face, but when she does wear makeup, she wears glitter going underneath the eyes and she wears more masculine face. The messiness of the glitter is just how she's feeling and it never has to actually be perfect because she isn't herself. Cassie is on the same line as Minnie in Skins with the smoky soft eyes but the tight fitted mainstream clothing because she just wants to be accepted and loved by everyone. She wants to play it safe to make sure she looks as commercially beautiful as possible. Cat's makeup is on the same line as Effie's. It's bold, dark, dark and her clothing is also dark but she wears her underwear on the outside to show that she's bold, strong and confident with her body. But the main look of Euphoria is Maddie's makeup which I'm wearing today. With her gemmed covered eyes and eyebrows to glitter, to bright colours, to her over the top 
incredible style because she is super confident in herself and she's an ex-pageant girl so now her catwalk is the hallway at school. Both shows have been massively influential for teens and young adults when it comes to makeup and fashion. Skins defined the British indie fashion of the 2000s. Over 10 years later if you type in smoky eye to google she'll come up. If you type in like grunge, tumblr girl, Effie Stone and will come up. Whereas with Euphoria, the makeup artist actually said that she got most of her inspiration for the makeup from Emmy Way Instagram pages. It's bold, it's beautiful, and a little bit over the top, but because of Euphoria, I feel like this makeup look now is more than acceptable to wear anytime, not just at a festival. I mean, I even bought a big pack of gems after watching the show because I just liked the makeup so much. I've covered a lot of topics in this video, however, I've only scratched the surface of these two incredible TV shows. From looking more into them, yes, of course, there are a lot of similarities between the two, but for the most part, they are so completely different. And at the end of the day, skins walked so Euphoria could run. Euphoria is more of an artistic, amazingly beautiful piece of TV, whereas Skins is a lot more real, it's got a lot more comedy and grittiness to it. So I think they are the main differences, but I can totally see why people think these are so similar. Both of these shows are two of my favorite shows I've ever, ever watched. I cannot wait to see where they take Euphoria. However, there's just one little, one little thing that's staring me right in the face about them being very, very similar. And that is the ending of season one of both shows. For some reason, they both end in a musical number. <laughs> For some reason, it just makes me laugh because it is just so bizarre. But Skins was the whole cast mouthing the words to Wild World. Don't really know why. It didn't really fit in any way. But when I was watching the show for the first time, I was very confused. I had no idea what was going on. So you best believe when they start singing at the end of Euphoria, I was like, I'm having a flashback. <laughs> Very clearly, the musical number in Euphoria is so much better. For one, Zendaya does actually sing in it and Lambrinth has made the music and it's been choreographed and it's a huge production thing and not them just walking down the street mouthing the words. But I just think a musical number at the end of both of these shows were just scarily similar and so bizarre that I couldn't not mention it. 